Hello everyone and welcome to a launch fest in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 with Realism Overhaul. Yes, Realism Overhaul has been updated to 1.3.1 and this is sort of a celebration of that. Uh, there's people that asked me whether it was really ready to go and it seems to be. And I decided to test it out by trying out some of these rocket mods and the craft files and the launch scripts are from 1.1.3 so they're actually a little bit out outdated but they're directly from my rocket profiles mission profiles install and I wanted to see how easy it would be to just sort of move them over and that to some extent it worked out to some extent it didn't some of the craft files just didn't open because parts had changed so much um, the ones I show in this video starting with DeckQ's Angara 1 here and this is Raider Nix US probes pack TDRS satellite and uh, we check the animations on that so obviously the ones that I'm going to show in this video actually opened uh, that's the first uh, line and uh, we'll see how they work out after they actually open in the new version but of course you know some mods will not be working properly if you go from 1.1.3 to 1.3.1 but so far so good with the Angara 1 there's the Angara 5 from DeQ and uh, this too uh, seems to lift off fine. Uh, this one I throttled down the core engine to ensure that it would last longer. That's not how I would implement it exactly uh, nowadays. This is an older launch script and I would probably do it a little bit differently. A lot of these are outdated launch scripts that I've made improvements upon so things might not work out but that's part of the fun of it like fairing separation obviously happening at the wrong time there. And here we have booster separation, at least that works, but it looks a little bit lopsided, so we need to fix that. Uh, probably the separatrons are a little bit off, or the coupler is a bit off. And we have ignition on the upper stage. I don't think this one hot stages, but I do hot staging now a little bit better than I did when I wrote up these older scripts. And here we are, we've got a little progress from SSTU on the top there. That could probably do with some fixing though as far as the numbers are concerned. And there's just a procedural tank with an engine to uh, simulate the KVTK stage. This of course is the Saturn V from FASA and very important for simulating Apollo missions. It got off the ground a little bit faster than I thought it would. Uh, it seemed to get a bit of a jump at the start there but otherwise uh, good to go there. By the way, Realism Overhaul is very easy to install because now they've updated the links for the dependencies on the forum page. Now, of course, there's also the CCAN option, but if you go, just go to the Realism Overhaul forum page, download uh, the dependencies where they say dependencies, those will be the correct versions that you need. And at various times in the history of Realism Overhaul, those weren't those links weren't always right but right now they're fine so if you get a KSP 1.3.1 install fresh install nothing else and just put the dependencies in that's a good way to start with realism overhaul and you can see that I've managed to get a version of RSS visual enhancements the clouds though it did have a little quirk you might have noticed yellow clouds earlier and so there are some visual quirks going on with scatter and RSS visual enhancements right now uh, here we have the ignition of the S4B stage coming up and we continue our way to orbit. Now of course I'm not going to simulate the entire mission here. It is just a launch vest. We're just tossing up rockets making sure they make orbit and this one did just fine with enough fuel to spare to transfer to the moon. This is of course Ariane 5. The boosters are from KW Rocketry. I like these boosters. The core is from uh, Real Scale Boosters I believe and so is the upper stage and so is the fairings I think. Now you'll notice I'm launching everything from Cape Canaveral just to move things quickly because I didn't want to change from launch site to launch site I just wanted to test everything out as quickly as possible and so this one is a go. The first stage is keeping up a high angle to make sure that the second stage has enough time to burn. It is trying for geostationary orbit I believe or geostationary transfer orbit separation of the first stage and the second stage is well waiting waiting and lit this is again another TDRS satellite from Raider Nick and well uh, that's high enough yep 
All right, this is an Atlas from FASA, Atlas Centaur, actually. So it's carrying the Centaur stage. And again, this is without any special modifications. Between 1.1.3 and 1.3.1, some mods definitely did change their parts. And so you'll have to make allowances for that. And it's not going to be possible to import every single craft file from 1.1.3 to 1.3.1. Uh, so I don't want to give that impression. But a lot still works just fine which is nice to know. And we have a separation and ignition of the centaur stage. Now this is an old launch script and one problem I had here was that this launch script keeps SAS on and it shouldn't do that. Uh, nowadays I have SAS on only at certain parts and definitely not on the second stage. That, that seems to cause a problem with certain stages. But anyway, so it still managed to make orbit, which is nice. There's the Atlas V from KK Launchers pack, and this had a configuration problem. You can actually see in the resource panel up there, liquid fuel and oxidizer. The engines were running on liquid fuel and oxidizer and didn't have enough thrust. Um, I have fixed this problem, but obviously it wasn't a direct importable thing. This is the Falcon 9 from KK Launchers pack, and this is alright. That said, I was the one who wrote the configuration for this, so the RO configuration, so I'm not entirely surprised that's alright. It's also the one that the launch script was based on. This is the baseline launcher for the launch script that I wrote, and so one would expect that it acts properly. Uh, this is not the recoverable version though, because on all the recoverable craft files, I had put a little camera from Hullcam VDS, and that part apparently has changed between versions in a way that prevented me from opening the craft file. This is the Gemini Titan from FASA. And Titan 2, of course. And here we have Jeb and Bill being launched in the Gemini capsule. And there you see that yellow cloud, which I think is an issue with our sense of visual enhancements in 1.3. But I'm not entirely sure. Actually, it's appropriate, sort of, for this... This uh, hypergolic burning uh, stage there. Uh, the hot staging obviously didn't work quite right, and that would be fixed with a more updated version of the of the KOS script. Okay, and do we make orbit though? And the answer is yes. And that's a pretty good orbit right there for Gemini missions. This is the Explorer 1 on a Juno 1 rocket from FASA. This is tricky because it's got one liquid stage and then those that sequence of three tiny little uh, SRBs, the baby sergeants. And so that's the end of the first stage and then the instrument unit has to spin up the upper three stages which will ignite close to apoapsis. So there's a semi-tricky launch script. And there they go. A set of 11, then a set of 3. The plume is not in the right place, but sometimes the plume gets displaced when there's high g-forces, and there are extremely high g-forces here. So I don't know whether the plume is in the wrong place because of the g-forces or not. It might be. I don't know why that would happen, but anyway. This is an attempt to launch a PSLV XL. I think this is from Real Skill Boosters. I'm not 100% sure on that. But we had a little bit of problem. The booster separation, as long as we were on the S, well, actually the core is even in SRBs, but the little SRBs were fine, and then those are, that's the other set of two, and that's the end of the core. But then once we went to the second stage, we had a flippy problem. And that's unusual for this height, and I wonder whether it's something to do with the gimbling on that engine, but I think also my more updated launch script would fix that. That is an interesting mission. At some point, we decided to check whether Skylab could be launched on an SLS. And it can be. We had tried that out before and it worked. The Skylab is from Raider Nick's uh, US... Well, I know I think there's a special Skylab station pack. So this is from his Skylab pack. And we are launching it on a Block 1 SLS, which has a capacity technically of 70 tons to orbit. There go the boosters, not quite right there. But we have a little bit of a problem 
Unfortunately, it tried to stage fairings, and in place of the fairings was the first stage decoupling. And of course, that's wrong. We must check our staging, and the staging was obviously wrong. Uh, so we didn't make orbit with Skylab this time, unfortunately. Which is a shame, because I did also want to test its animations to make sure those work. Here is Saturn 1, and we noticed a little bit of a glitchiness on the inner stage there. Uh, I think that's because of Scatterer, I'm not sure. It seems to clear up at higher altitudes, that's why I think it's Scatterer, but I'm not sure again. So, Saturn 1B actually. So with a J2 on the upper stage, and we're about to have staging here. The Apollo Command and Service Module are underfueled, so otherwise the Saturn 1B can't really carry it to orbit. Uh, of course, having the Service Module fully fueled is not necessary for low Earth orbit missions. That would be overkill. And so here we are making orbit and actually just shy of orbit which is fine because it allows the S4B to deorbit and allows the service module engine to complete orbit and that I did manually okay so next up is the Titan 4A with the Centaur upper stage and this is from Raider Nick's US rockets pack uh, which has the nice tower it comes with that tower and that tower worked just fine and here we are with the center engine ignition the core ignition and pending booster separation in a few seconds there we go the boosters are separating and they are supposed to go off semi asymmetrically and they seem to and fairing separation worked fine, even though those are huge, not not the biggest, mind you, but still huge fairings. And unfortunately, hot staging didn't work uh, as I would like. Again, that is a issue I've already dealt with and fixed, but this is an old launch script. Okay, and Centaur? There we go. Now this was supposed to send this payload to a geosynchronous transfer orbit, but um, we we made low Earth orbit just fine. But again, the SAS issue. So now it started twitching. Something about SAS and RL10 engines just doesn't like them, and so we went all crazy and did not make the geosynchronous transfer orbit. This is the Vega rocket from Forgotten Real Engines. Easy to forget Forgotten Real Engines, but it does provide some nifty things, including the entirety of this rocket, all the stages, including the liquid stage at the top, the Avum. And so this is how it launches here. The staging is a little bit awkward. And I think at some points I used procedural fairings in this. It's been a while since I actually built it. And here we have the fairing staging. And yeah, the upper fairing is definitely a procedural fairing. And actually the staging between the third stage and the fourth stage, the last SRB and the Avum, is a little bit iffy as we we're about to see. Yeah, that could do with some better timing. In general it's tough to stage SRBs because they trail off and you don't know exactly what time would be the best time to get them off. You can't use the MechJeb stage time indication because that's calculating based on their full thrust instead of their trailing off. Anyway, this is a Zenit 2. This is from Raider Nick's Soviet Rockets pack. And this is what we'll end with. We went from A to Z, if you will. Of course, not nearly covering all the rockets that I have to deal with, but uh, it's a good selection, I think. And once again, that's a great plume. Uh, that, that plume is very impressive. I once again, the bad hot staging, sorry about that. It will be fixed. But it's nice to see that uh, things straight from 1.1.3 seem to work reasonably well here. 
one problem pack was SSTU. SSTU has changed a lot since 1.1.3, so anything to do with SSTU is going to be dubious going from one version to another. But anyway, this reached orbit, and that is our launch fest to celebrate uh, Realism Overhaul in 1.3.1. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.